Hey mamas, Christina Moreland here, author of The Secrets of the Supermom series and Fit Mom Secrets. And I want to talk to you today about something that defines us all and I think it's really important. And that is what is a supermom? I think it's time that we come up with our own definition. And I'm going to tell you um, a few stories and why I think this is super important. Well, um, I just got back from a really intensive marketing event. I was there for four days. It was awesome. We went from nine to seven every single day and my mom came with me. And so I introduced her to people the whole time we were there and they were like, they couldn't believe that she was my mom. And not only did she come with me to support me, but she actually paid some of her own money to fly from Texas to California for four days, stay with me, we split hotel expenses, we split flight, everything, just so she could help to support me for my business. And to me, that is a super mom. And I have been really, 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 really blessed to have an amazing example in my life. And so I wanted to talk about this because I think a lot of times when we hear that word super mom, well, first of all, we, we, bring it together and we form one word, super mom, which is unrealistic, right? That's the superhero that none of us should aspire to be. But the definition that I'm using is it's very intentional. And those words are very, they're separated on purpose. Super mom, as in somebody who parents with excellence. And I want to give you some more examples to inspire you. Um, when I was younger, I had to wear really, really thick Coke bottle glasses and they made my eyes look huge. Um, in fact, I look like a bug <laughs> and, and um, I wore them for like five or six years. And my mom kept taking me to doctor after doctor because she was like, something's wrong here. Um, nobody in our family has this vision problem. It was starting to impact my confidence. I couldn't see the board very well in the classroom. This was around the time I was five or six years old. So these were early reading um years and then I ended up wearing them up until the summer before I went into sixth grade and finally she took me she kept taking me to doctor after doctor and they kept saying the same thing and then she found a doctor who was known for curing blindness in babies and she took me to go see this doctor and when she was sitting in the um, the waiting room we were sitting there and she said she felt horrible because she looked around and all these kids had severe eye problems some of them were blind some of them had um, you know devices that they were wearing some of them had eye patches and here she was in the there to get me contacts and she felt really 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 bad hi Jessica thanks for saying hello hey Brian I'm so glad you're here um, so through this process of discovering the um, so we went into the appointment and we sat down and she told the doctor you know I'm here to get Christina contacts and the doctor looked at her well she looked at my eyes and it took her all of 10 seconds and she put her equipment away and she said we're not going to give Christina contacts today and my mom was gearing up for this, you know, she's responsible, she can handle it, she was ready to fight for me. And the doctor said, because I'm going to have her out of these glasses for a year. And what ended up happening was it was a muscle problem because when I was a baby, I had a lazy eye and that lazy eye was corrected with surgery, but they didn't patch the eye. So the muscle didn't fully develop like the other eye. And so it always ended up it was a muscular problem and that was why I, I legitimately couldn't see, but it was something that could be corrected. But had my mother waited another year to bring me to this doctor, then it could have ruined my eyes forever. And the doctor told her that. And my mom, she's told me this example many times because she said, you know, these are examples that when you are a mother, you know when something's not right with your child, first of all. And sometimes you do go into situations feeling like I want to push and I want to help my child, but then you feel, you feel kind of bad. You, you know, here she was looking in this room at all these poor kids that had eye problems that probably never would have been corrected or um, they could have been corrected, but not as miraculously as mine. I mean, I don't, I wear one contact now, um, but you know, I'm over 40 now. So those are my 40 year old eyes and everybody gets them. But my point is that she pushed and pushed and pushed until she found answers. And that to me is a super mom. And so I've had some amazing examples and I have another story. Um, I'm, I'm blessed to be close to both of my parents. Um, my dad lives, you know, about 50 miles away from my house and we see each other 
I talked to him once a week, but my mom and I lived together for 16 plus years after my parents were divorced. And so she and I not only have that mother daughter relationship, but we also have that friendship and we've got each other's back no matter what. And I remember, um, we, when I went to college, she didn't have money as a single parent to send me to college. And so she actually, she was running a house at the time and she ended up giving up the house um, and moving in with my grandparents so that she could help save money. I did get some grants and I did get some student loans, but it wasn't enough to cover the four years that I was there. So she gave up her lifestyle temporarily, but she gave up that lifestyle so that I could go to college. And that to me is a super mom, somebody who is always pushing, always making sure. And it wasn't at the detriment of her, of her own life. That's what's really important to me. I, I feel like my message to moms is we can all be super moms without losing our super selves. And, um, you know, I just wanted to give these examples because maybe you have an example of somebody in your life who inspires you to do better and be better. And, um, and I'd like to know who it is. If you can think of that person, I would love to know who it is and then what that person taught you. So I have, um, I have a couple of tips. I have five tips of how I think we can all be better super moms. And so I wanted to talk to you about those. The first one is, Put yourself, and you may not be able to see this, but put yourself back on your own priority list. And this is super important. We keep hearing these messages that self-care is important, but it truly is important. Hey, Sarah, thanks for saying hi. Self-care is super important. It is not selfish. Um, when I went to this conference for four days, um, there were a lot of health and fitness coaches there too. And we were talking about how the, the health and fitness, it energizes us. So when I come home, I can be a better mom. I cook better. I can, I can be better for them. It actually has a ripple effect. And for you, it may not be going to the gym or eating healthy foods, but maybe it's just taking a 15 minute bath at the end of every day. Maybe it's, um, when you're feeling stressed, getting up from your desk and walking around. Maybe it's, um, you know, just hot tea in the evenings. Something that you do every single day that's just for you. For me, it's the gym. Um, that's my free, I call it free therapy. <laughs> and that, that is my thing. But, you know, it may be something different for you and that's totally fine. But I just want to encourage you and challenge you to put something on your, put something on your list that makes you a priority as well. The second thing is keep pushing. When I was telling that story about my mother earlier, um, you know, she kept pushing for answers. She didn't take, I mean, she did get me the glasses that I needed at the time. For several years, I wore them. But at the end of the day, she kept pushing for answers. And I've done the same thing with my kids. Um, many of you know, my oldest has ADHD. And that was a three-year diagnosis because I knew something was up. I knew something was off and we just kept pushing for answers and we finally discovered them. Sometimes our journey takes longer than we think it's going to and that's okay. Uh, we just have to keep pushing. My third tip is be present and that one is super important to me because I know so many times, we all do it, but I know so many times my kids are like, hey mom, I wanna show you something. My my son, Ashton, he's 11, and he just got this laser tag game, and he strapped, he wanted me to play with him yesterday, which is rare, I mean, he's 11, so he's getting out of that play phase. And so I was like, yeah, I, mean, I dropped whatever I was doing, and I was like, yeah, I'll play with you. I strapped on the laser X machine, and we were running through the house trying to buzz each other um, with the light up toy. And it was so fun, and we were running, and we were laughing and um, that was a great bonding experience. And where I learned this was from somebody I admire greatly. Um, he runs a multi-million dollar company and we've had, um, we've become good friends over the years. And one day I asked him, cause he is an awesome dad. And I was like, how did you, how do you run a multi-million dollar company and make time for your family? And um, he has three boys. They've all done exceptionally well. They've all gone to college. And he said, you know, I was sitting there. I came home one night and it was after a very stressful day. And my wife was trying to bring me up to speed and tell me what was going on. The boys, one was telling me about an upcoming school event that he had. Another one was telling me about baseball. And all he could think about was, I need to do this for the marketing meeting. And, and he had this running list of things that he had to do. 
And he finally just took a breath and he was sitting at the dinner table and he just kind of put his hands together and he closed his eyes and he told himself, I give myself permission to be here right now. And those nine words made such a difference. And when you end a sentence like that with right now, it immediately brings you back into focus. It brings you back into the moment. And so that's my encouragement to you. When you're struggling with being present with your kids, give yourself permission to be here right now, okay? And then if you do it, I would love to know what that does for you because I've done it many times and it really does help. The second, or sorry, this is number four. Number four, they keep saying second. <laughs> Why am I stuck on number two today? Uh, the fourth thing is give yourself permission to make mistakes. We all make mistakes. And I was that mom, especially when I was a new mom. So I didn't have... Um, a bro well, so I have siblings, but I never lived in the same house with them because I have a stepbrother and a stepsister. And I am an only child. I was raised as an only child. I didn't babysit a whole lot because I was in sports and school events. So when I became a parent, that was my first experience. I learned how to change a diaper um, in the hospital with my newborn son. So that was my first experience of being a mom. And I was that mom that wanted to do everything just right. And I wanted to do everything perfect. And I was so afraid I was going to break my child. And you're going to make mistakes, but you learn from them. And then honestly, I feel like some of our mistakes allow us to get to that next level with our kids and with our family so that we can be even better for them. So give yourself permission to make mistakes because sometimes you'll look back on those mistakes and you'll think, oh my gosh, that was the greatest lesson ever. Or that was such a great, I'm so privileged to have learned that. So give yourself permission to make mistakes. And then my fifth tip today is give yourself um, a new de definition of super mom. Give yourself what is a super mom to you. And I want you to think of someone who's taught you more about being a mom than anybody else. Maybe it's your mom, maybe it's your sister, maybe it's a friend who has, who's just an amazing example. And I would like you to have that image clear in your mind of who that person is and what is it about them? What, what did they teach you that is so revolutionary to the idea of being a mom? And then what did that person teach you? So if you have ideas, I would love for you to contribute in the comments. Um, we can definitely create an awesome discussion from this, but um, you can also just keep it to yourself, but I would encourage you to journal about it because it's going to lead you to a next st stage with your kids. And um, if you have something in mind that you want to accomplish with them this year or in the next month, then Asking yourself that question, having a clear definition of a good example in your head will allow you to get there. So I love doing this live event today. Um, this was something I was really inspired to do. So if you were inspired today, I would just ask you to say hello. Thanks for saying hi, Jessica and Sarah and Brian. And um, write your comments down below and because we can definitely get an awesome discussion going and learn from each other. I will be here on Thursday. I don't know what we're going to do yet, but I will be here Thursday at 1.30, and I look forward to seeing you then. Thanks for joining me today.